Welcome to the College Football Week for Friday Slate Breakdown. We got four games going on on Friday night, and we figured we'd give you guys a little bit of a look into each one of them. Gonna have some plays across the board, not necessarily the most exciting games, those are safe for Saturday, but some value to be found in the market for sure. So the first game we're going to look at here is going to be Wisconsin at Purdue. Big 10 matchup. Uh, Boilermakers haven't beaten the Badgers since 2003. But still plenty of rivalry uh, action going on here. I bet Purdue plus 7.5 early in the week. It's down to about 6 or 5.5 across the market. And I would still take it out of that number. Try to find the 6 if you can because that's a relatively key football number. Uh, I'll get into my cap a little bit before I bring you guys in to, to give some insight. Um, I'm not buying this Wisconsin team right now. I think Tanner Mordecai just hasn't been impressive to me. Uh, a lot of what they're doing has been horizontal passing and run schemes and not the downfield explosiveness we were promised. They're 114th out of 133 teams in explosive plays on offense. And Purdue's defense has been a little weekly to start the season, but Ryan Walters, a new head coach, you keep improving that unit. He was a defensive coordinator at Illinois last year, one of the best defenses in the country last season. And I actually have been impressed with Hudson Card, the Purdue quarterback. Uh, completed 70% of his passes for 320 yards last week. Just fed Abdur Rahman Yassin. I think it's maybe not that. Oh, wow. Who finished with 10 catches for 108 yards. Um, but ultimately, I think Purdue has value at home here. I think Wisconsin is a little bit overinflated in the market just because they hired Luke Fickle and it hasn't it just it hasn't been there for me yet and i'm curious you guys were a lot higher in wisconsin before the season cody i'll go to your first what's your read on this team so far i mean i think the downplay on the wisconsin offense right now i think it is well warranted but i think it's a little um oh, what's the word you want to use exaggerated I mean, we're, we're talking, we're changing 50 plus years of scheming here. I mean, we're, yeah. we're <laughs> diehard Wisconsin fans are probably shaking in their boots what they first saw when it was coming. Um, and, and it's weird to say, but I think this game serves as kind of like the, uh, the perfect uh, bounce back opportunity for the offense because this Purdue defense stinks. Um, but uh, then you could say the same thing on the flip side, Wisconsin's pass attack has stunk. Like it's really bad. Uh, but one thing that I've really enjoyed watching Wisconsin as of late, now granted against far inferior defenses, is they have been going back and establishing the run. Um, not at, obviously, the highest rate that we're used to Wisconsin football, but at a very successful rate. Uh, top 25 in success rate, um, 36 in PPA. Uh, so what they're doing is that means is they're at least gaining half the distance to gain on early downs, and it's going to set the rest of the offense up with friendly f uh, field position on later downs. Now, against a more stout defense, like when they play like uh, Michigan or something, eh, good luck with that. Now, against Purdue, they're going to find a lot more success because Purdue's defense is absolutely horrendous. Uh, we're talking well below average in success rate, explosiveness, which now Wisconsin doesn't really capitalize on, but now that kind of opens the door for maybe them to find success in that department. Now, I wrote, I wrote up this game. Um, I I could still say take the six, five and a half, whatever the current number is. I'm seeing six right now. But I wanted to uh, take a little more added security to it. I'm tying in their money line with uh, someone else we're going to talk about today for a little Friday night fun. It's not the most confident play of mine, but I, I do have at least enough conviction that I think Wisconsin can, can at least pull this one out. Schwartz, any thoughts on this Bay 10 matchup? Wow, Cody took a, like a lot of my very few direct notes on this one. But uh, yeah, I, I do think it's college football is all about adapting, innovating, and moving fast. But man, we are talking about a lot of history to erase at Wisconsin. And I, I at a certain point, you do have to mar start making judgments. It's a short season. But I think it is a little too early to say this Wisco team isn't going to play good football under this system. That being said, they haven't been sharp. I have not been impressed. But I do have this written down as a get-right game for them, as for the Wisconsin offense. For that reason, I'm not willing to bet on Wisco at like basically a touchdown spread. I don't love that on the road for a team that hasn't shown anything yet. But I'm leaning over. Uh, numbers 53 and a half. Purdue defense has been absolutely brutal. Wisco defense is solid, but it hasn't been a special Wisconsin defense. It's it, this is not a game I'm super excited to bet on, but I would just I would lean towards more points than we're used to seeing from a Wisconsin-Purdue football game. 
Wayne, and could I jump in before uh, you say your piece one more, one more time? I forgot to say something. Uh, I think Will quickly mentioned it. This this isn't a typical uh, like elite Wisconsin defense that we have seen in years past. Uh, they like yeah. Purdue. They also struggle with success rate mightily. Now what? And it's cheeky to say it this way. It's what they do have benefiting them is um, Purdue is a pass heavy unit. Um, run game it's practically non-existent there they are horrible across the board in advanced metrics um so i guess uh, for a defense that kind of struggles you kind of get to you know like cheat back a little or, or cheat up a little and try, try and take away the short gains that Purdue's going to be trying to exploit because wisconsin does a great job of limiting, limiting explosiveness they don't let anyone behind them uh, great open field tackling unit it you, you can't just say that's gonna be the the case. That's how it's gonna go. But um, I feel a lot more a uh, lot more conviction on the Wisconsin side to kind of clean up their defense, kind of getting to go against this one dimensional uh, Purdue unit. Now, what scares me, and you brought him up also earlier, is Hudson Card's been playing very very good. Um, so yeah, so it's 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 just a tough, such a tough one. There's enough factors for me on Purdue's end to give Wisconsin the scare, as kind of the numbers implying. This, and and that, that's a big reason why I'm going to stick with the money line. I'm not going to take the six, but I just think Wisconsin has just the few more advantages to at least uh, secure the win. And, you know, hey, let's uh, shoot for uh, Wisconsin by five. I, I don't know what you took. <laughs> well, I got the seven and a half, and I, I would still recommend the five and a half or six, whatever the current number is. But the last thing I want to bring up is uh, Wisconsin, Wisconsin did not play well last week. Uh, they beat Georgia Southern by 21, but Davis Brayton threw five picks and lost a fumble, like, the dude absolutely melted, and I, I just, I don't see that happening to Hudson Card, who, you know, isn't the most dynamic quarterback, but is, is pretty reliable, and I, I think he will not throw five picks in this game. Um, another thing for Purdue last week is they lost three fumbles against Syracuse, and I think just the turnover regression in both directions uh, provides value to Purdue in this game, but overall, I think the Boilermakers are live dogs in this one, and I, I wouldn't be shocked if they beat Wisconsin outright, to be entirely honest with you. Hey, um, let's not rule out that Purdue wasn't a look-ahead spot for the Badgers here. Because <laughs> oh, they, they, they looked horrible yesterday. Year. No, I was, talking, I was talking about last week. Oh, uh, uh, I see, I see, I see. Yeah, there true. you go. Well, that'll do it for us. Uh, check out our Saturday slate breakdown, where we break down the, uh, the actual big games of the week. Uh, not necessarily some Mountain West teams, but handful of ranked matchups that we're really fired up about uh again thank you guys so much for subscribing and please like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already uh we hit 10,000 subscribers this week so very fired up about that gonna be bringing you guys a ton more content coming very soon and we hope you enjoy this friday slate